spectacle, oh yeah! Turn to smile, yeah! Viva TV! <laughs> Listen! Shh. Oh yeah! Life sweet, make we shout out, oh yeah! Sleep and we wake, say, oh yeah! Everything is gonna be just okay, oh yeah! Oh yeah! If it all get over that, uh, drunk me smoke on that, jump and sleep and so baba. And you live my life like at the last day, and I sit down and wait till me lay down and green. Blessing just a come my way, walking on me life like your punk ass way. Oh yeah, me life sweet, let me shout out. Sleep on me wake, say, well everything is gonna be. Everybody fever TV, come on, oh yeah. Oh yeah. Don't make nobody tell you not to happy. Now nah, live my life, please nobody. Life short, why me a worry? Well, in a grave, you no know, spend money. More food pan for ya, more rims pan to ya. High priest there, everybody there. Jummy say you there, you give it there. Everybody! Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh Fever TV, intimate life! Jump and sleep and so baba I live my life like the last day And I sit down and wait till me lay down and pray Blessing just a come my way Packing on me life like your punk ass way Oh yeah, my life sweet make me shout out oh yeah Sleep on me wake say oh yeah Everything is gonna be just okay Fever TV say oh yeah Back inside of intimate, live, intimate, and interactive, globally driven, and wow, mod. I'm feeling that, of course. Oh, yeah, the man himself, five time Juno Award winning. It's like he didn't want to share with anybody else. Mr. Esco Leiva in the building. What's going on, Kerry? Hey, welcome, family. We're looking sharp. You know, <laughs> trying, to, trying a little thing. And wow, I mean, this whole, this whole process of um, reggae music and the success, the higher heights, that just when you think you've seen it all, it, it grows another leg, it grows another branch, you know what I mean? And it's amazing to see um, in this time, this day, this style, your music, your progress, and just um, amazing, um, just the talent that you have. That's incredible. Thank you very much, Kerry. You know, as I always say, you know, music is an art form. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So every artist have their unique way of presenting themselves, you know what I mean? Right. Just like you give someone a canvas to do a painting and they decide to just throw the painting at it. Who to tell is that that's that the best painting in the world, you know what I mean? Right, right, yes, right. Yes, right. I'm just being myself and just doing my music, you know? And, thanks. and the whole thing about Intimate Live, which is what made you such a prime candidate for it, uh, is it's global. You know, 23 countries were all over the world, uh, from Africa through the U.S., through Canada, and of course in the Caribbean. And what all those territories have in common is that you've traveled there, <laughs> you've had so much success in record sales. And what do you attribute your your global popularity, global success to? Well, I, I attribute to um, positive music. You know what I mean? Mm. Reggae music from from Jamaica. Uh, I was talking to Dana Van Germain yesterday mm. from Penthouse Records. You know what I mean? And I remember the first record that he put out for me, which is my first June Award winning song, Bleaching Shop 2012. I remember prior to that, doing a song and put it on YouTube and see I have seven views. You know what I mean? And open to God, I would, I would reach up there. And I remember 
see 100,000 views, 200. So it's all about growth and they don't believe in what to do and just keep on working at it, you know what I mean? Right, and obviously sticking to the integrity to your belief structure systems. And um, of course, hailing from Jamaica, Manchester, talk about the transition coming from Jamaica to Toronto, Canada, and talk about how that journey contributed to your sound. Well, you know, I, I was born in a country, in a place called Armands in Manchester, you know what I mean? Right. I grew up with my grandmother, you know what I mean? And um, I, I was telling my band member them all the time that there's nothing surprised me in music because it's our deja vu, you know what I mean? <laughs> Long before yes. I even know what deja vu mean, <laughs> I used to walk to the shop mm. and just uh, visioning the, the, the ball feel as a crowd of people, you know what I mean, from right. a tender age. Right. So just to see it manifest in real life, you know what I mean? Sometimes I've, I've been in some place in the world, I'm like, what? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I can't believe that what I always see in my in my subconscious mind as a youth growing up in Jamaica, when the grandmother used to say, you sing too much, you make too much noise. Just to see it manifest, you know what I mean? It's it's really a joy. And I must honestly say, what I have done and some places I've traveled over the years, it's so glorious to me. I mean, I know that there's still higher heights and deeper depths right. to go within this reggae music and this mission, but I appreciate, you know what I mean, everything that have happened for Escaliva over the years. You know, as you talk about that word, powerful, appreciation, um, as many stage shows that I've seen you on, Rebel Salutes, and, and of course, um, Rodman, Reggae Fest, and all these things all around the world, the thing that I always notice about you, it's the same energy, the same positivity, the same excitement that you bring, and that energy is infectious. Talk about the infectiousness of the energy and talk about how you inject that into your your sound, into your music. Yeah, well, I just did a monologue with um, the album front and, I, and a part of my monologue, I said, being a true musician is just not just putting pen to paper and melodies. Mm. You know what I mean? You have to be true to your calling. Yes. You know what I mean? Because real people is not going to feel your music if you're just singing off dry lips. You know what I mean? No so you have, to just, <laughs> you have to just sing sing what you truly believe in. You know what I mean? And if you, you do the stats, you realize that most of the the world's biggest song is coming from a deep place. Right. You know what I mean? It's coming from a, a right. vessel. You know what I mean? Yeah. A positive vessel. Check Bob Marley. Check all of these great icons. Right. Their song, they would, there's a story behind whatever they, they, they sang. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So when I just migrated to Canada from Jamaica yeah. and I sang a song like Living My Life in the Factory. Much. You know what I mean? First time I... I, I life is not worked. satisfactory. Yeah. Like the first time I, I ever worked in my life was in a factory and gin, gin and steel. You know what I mean? And when I realized how hard that work is, yeah. I wrote a song called Living My Life in the Factory. So it's real. And people right. love that song anywhere right. I perform all across Canada. Right, right. And, you know, it's funny that you talk about that because, um, again, I'll just shout out the um, the radio family flow and G987 yeah. FM, everybody who supports the culture and the music. But it's... I don't even like to call it the struggle. I call it the battle, the reality that we have to endure in order to attain the higher heights, in order to get to where we're going. And as we talk about that process, um, the ability to speak your truth, your reality, in the expectation that you will realize your goals. I, I want you to talk about strive. I want you to talk about just the, the, the motivation behind songs like that. Well, Strive is produced by um, a German producer called Silly Wax. They're the one who pro produced Smile Jamaica. And, uh, yeah, you know what yeah. I mean? And I, I met those guys online. You know online. I mean? When Pentos Record released my first song, 2012, they reached out to me online and said, we're from Germany, we're a producer. We're coming to Jamaica to find it. I was like, whatever. You know what I mean? So one day I was sitting at Pentos Record and saw these two white guys walking the studio and said, we're looking for Esca Levi. Mm. And this was the first time I must say, I said this once in an interview first. This is the first time I actually collect a two hundred thousand dollar for a record. I was like, What? I'm rich. You know what I mean? So uh, uh, I wanna big up Silly Walks, yes, you know what I mean? Yeah. Audi and Josh out of Germany, Hamburg, yes. Germany. Yes. Um that song is really coming from a deep place. I, I written the course of that song in Hamburg, Germany. Mm. While I, I, I was there on tour for the first time in 2013, there off. And I was just here in Kabaka Pyramid and the record. Yes, yes, so I, yes. And I should tell you that when I recorded that song, I was so sick. Mm. I, I remember vivid, sick. Now, like, were, were you in Jamaica or in Germany? I was in Jamaica. You were in Jamaica. Yeah, okay, because they, they came I, to Jamaica yeah, to I record. Yeah, the course, yeah. the course in Germany, and I go to Jamaica, and I was like here in Kabaka. And it, but that 2013, to tell you that time when I wrote that song, I didn't know that I would be here right now mm. with the mindset, you know, we all mm -hmm. go through things yeah, and things. go through struggles, you know what I mean? Andrew. And I remember going to Kabaka studio and he just wrote two verses for it and 
It's really amazing song, you know what I mean? People love it all over the world. All over the world, and certainly yeah. requested um, all over the world. Uh, talk about the difference between, I know how I felt the first time I, I went through Europe, and I saw the popularity of not just reggae music or, or dance hall, but the real, like, roots rock, real culture, real vibes, real, you know what I mean? Like, I, first time I went to Europe, I mean, when you're getting requests for, for Ken Booth and John Holtz and Alton Ellis. Daddy you right. Yeah, Daddy you right, right? Rest in peace, of course, Daddy you right. And so when you're getting, um, when you're engaging with those types of audiences that, for the most part, are all, all European, all white, I mean, what, is it, what was that like for you as an artist? Well, to tell the truth, as a reggae artist, mm. you know what I mean? Not until you venture in those parts of the world, you would appreciate reggae music right. the way it ought to be appreciated. Mm. For example, I remember first time I went there in 2012, I was in a club and they play a song called Lucifer, the son of the morning, Lucifer, I'm gonna morning. chase you. And I'm like everybody, you every young people is like, chase you out of her. I'm gonna put on my iron shirt chase. and chase it and out of her. And I, and I touched the white guy beside me and I said, Who is that? He said, You don't know that song? He said, Listen, that song is like one of the biggest songs in Europe. Max Romeo. I was like, Max Romeo? Yeah, you know what I mean? So, yes. not until you venture in those parts and see how, you know what I mean, Europeans appreciate the roots, the reggae, the drum and the bass. Right. You know what I mean? You will be a different artist, you know what I mean? You will think different, you know? Right. So, I, I, I'm happy that I have those experience from then, 2012, 2013, right. come to thus far. So, I just know where am I heading, you know what I mean? Uh, Giving thanks. And you can hear the, the sound, the growth in the music. And so, as, as we talk about that in Europe and, and Germany and New Zealand, all these different places that you, you've been received, well received, and certainly um, millions of views and all that amazingness.